I didn't wrestle at all with sending him back out for the eighth. So hypothetically, he gets through that eighth, even though his pitch count's even more elevated, you would give him the chance? It, it just depends. Like, I mean, if it, yeah, if he's at 105, 108, 110, yeah, probably. You know, if if we're getting into, you know, what I would have considered a danger zone, then maybe, maybe not. But, no, he was going. Brian? What did you see about how he was able to bear down in the seventh when they had the two on? How did he get through that? Um, yeah, it was um, – who did he end up getting? To, he got Calhoun to end that on the ground ball, right? Yeah. I thought he did a really gut, good job. But, you know, after he lost a couple of guys with, with walks, he get, got r right back on the attack with Abanez and got himself to O2 and was able to get him – and then, you know, Calhoun got a decent piece of it, but got him to put it on the ground. I just thought when, you know, following the two walks for him to get right back into the strike zone and, and gain some count leverage with Abanez was big for him. Aaron. Aaron, did you have a pitch count in mind for him? Like you're just following up on Meredith's question. I mean, in your head when he's, he starts the inning, the eighth with 94 pitches, I think. In your head, are you thinking, okay, if he gets this at 105, 110, he's going back out there? No, I wasn't looking at it like that. I was just looking at it as now you start to look at it as I was going to let him go as long as he was efficient. You know, if it starts to get, you know, where he's laboring and, and walking more guys, then we got to, you know, then we got to make an adjustment, obviously. But no, I wasn't, there wasn't a number I was looking at. I was, you know, hoping he was getting some quicker, quick outs, but uh, there wasn't a n specific number I was looking at. Dave. With Aaron, like, how do you tell with him effort-wise? Like, he doesn't throw hard, and, and he's so creative in the way he pitches. Like, he pretty much stays the same throughout, right? I and mean, that was the first time he's been into the eighth inning, I think, as a, as yeah. a starting pitcher. So do you well, notice much of a difference in him when he gets that late or, or not really? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. I, but I thought today he held his stuff well. Um, I thought he was in control. Um, and he throws hard for him. You know, he's he's still working out there, and and as I always tell you, his heater p really plays. So, um, I I just thought he was, even though he lost a couple of guys there in the seventh. Again, I I think the Abanias at bat told me that he was still sound and sharp and physically in a good spot. Ron, in a time where all the focus is on the guys who throw ninety eight, ninety nine, and up. He's consistently in the low 90s. What enables him to succeed at that? It's a really good fastball, so don't get enamored with the number. I mean, there's guys that throw 96, 97 that are good hitting, that it's not a good fastball. We're able to kind of measure those things now a lot better, whereas when I was playing, it was like, man, this guy's heater's getting on me, and he, it's not a great number, whereas this guy that's throwing really hard, it's kind of good hitting. So... Nestor's is not good hitting, and when he can really establish the inside of the play with the cutter off of that fastball and now go away with his heater some or challenge you up in the strike zone and then have the ability to slow you down with, you know, with the breaking ball. So um, he just does a lot of things. He works both sides of the plate, but I think with every guy that's not necessarily overpowering, he, he – you. I think you got to establish a piece of the inside part of the plate, and he, he's he's great at doing that. Those things you can now measure, what are they? Well, I mean, you're measuring spin on the ball, life on the ball, you know, how it, you know, how it acts as opposed to what it perceives to the hitter and things like that. And you see it as a result, you know, he gets a lot of swing and miss. Brian. Aaron, if you go back to spring training, I don't think Nestor was necessarily guaranteed a spot in the rotation. When did you realize he could be this good? He was guaranteed a spot in my rotation. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I went into the season, you know, I'm not surprised at all by this. Now, if we go back 14 months, maybe I'm surprised that he's, you know, this dominant and this kind of staple in our rotation. But going into this, going to spring training, not at all. So what changed that in your mind? When did you kind of click there and say? I think this in is a guy. parts of last year when he went into the rotation and he was he was this guy last year in our rotation. Um, so I'm not surprised that he's continued it. Greg and then Lindsey. Aaron, how much did it add to the tension or pressure? I guess just that it was a zero zero game and it, one it added to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was hanging on over there for dear life. <laughs> it, it definitely. Uh, 
added a layer of drama to it uh, for sure um and and obviously makes every pitch even that much more meaningful and 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 intense which which is all makes it all the more impressive